I basically wanted to have everything on t on the scope with just one handle, unplug a couple of cables, and then carry it in, and I'm good to go. Uh, and we go a lot of camp we do a lot of camping. So the other idea was just that have a setup that I could take camping, easy to set up and, and do it, you know, to take it anywhere. So I can set it up between meetings in the afternoon, uh, and then um, have it ready to go for the evening. So. So where are you from then, Shane? You don't sound like you're from uh, the Basingstoke Astronomical no, Society. No, I am from uh, Florida originally. And you moved here for the weather. I moved here for the weather, <laughs> yes, as you can see today. So. so Shane, what did you want out of this setup? So, I wanted something that did not have counterweights, something I didn't have to balance, and something that was lightweight and portable. Perfect. Yeah. And have you got it? Yes, I got it. So you think it's worth it? I think it's worth it. So okay. if you have to set up every night, uh, the worst thing, the two worst things is balancing and having to put weights. Yeah, if you if you aren't able to uh, have a uh, shed or a dome, uh, then spend the money elsewhere where you don't have to at least, you can save some time uh, setting up each night. So what actually have we got here? Talk us through your, your setup then. Yeah, so this is the uh, Pegasus Astro uh, Nix uh, 101. And this is one of the new robotic mounts. And it is similar to the ZWO um, AM5 or the Rainbow Astro. I think Rainbow Astro was the first one. So was it one of these harmonic Yeah, har drives? Yeah, harmonic gear mounts, yes. So it doesn't uh, look right without a counterweight, does it? It doesn't. It doesn't look right without a counterweight. So, so when uh, I think of my telescope, yeah. it's got a massive grip with counterweight yeah, on it. Yeah, exactly. Now, I think it, it holds up to... If I'm not, don't quote me on this specs are probably wrong, but 19 to 20 without a counterweight. But if you can see right here, if you want to go over that, uh, it does have a spot for a counterweight. So you can screw a, a bar into here if you go to something larger. So if you wanted the C14. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So this just unscrews and then you screw in one. And I think it's a um, Skywatcher EQ5 bar oh, okay. thread so I think it's a, a fairly common one. St standard weight. Yeah. So when would you need to upgrade to a counterweight? If I think you go over 20k. 20k? Yeah. Which is quite a lot. It's quite a lot if you think about it yeah but if you have a large scope with all the other stuff on it's probably not too hard to do. So. Right. Um, yeah and this is it that's it so it's there's no that's all set up and ready to go if we had clear weather. So, clear. so you had your old setup let's jump back a stage so you had yeah. your old setup yes and you said you really put an effort in to simplify it. Yeah, to try to simplify it. So I had a uh, C, a Sim 40. So, um, oh, who's the brand on that? Ioptron? Yeah, Ioptron. Yeah, I had the Ioptron. And while it was small, I mean, it was similar in weight and size to this right here. You still had to balance it every night. And then you had to do, of course, the counterweights. And so set up, you know, 20 to 30 minutes added to it. Um, and then... You know, it, it was, yeah, it's just always a pain. And I, I never could get the balance right on it. So it's probably just me more so than anything else. Uh, and so my two main things were when I saw this announced, it was like, I'm selling that, uh, which I still need to sell, by the way. Uh, and I'm getting this so I don't have to do uh, balance and um, uh -huh. uh, carry weights around. Sea Dog's just wandering past. Yeah. Sorry, K-Dog. Yeah, that's Klaus. <laughs> and then you, so you simplified the camera as well because you were doing... Yeah, uh, so I did have filters and everything else, and so I was doing mono. So I've simplified it even further. Not, I realize this will be a lot of arguments, but I went with the one-shot color. Uh, and then I did have a separate guide scope, and so now I've gone to an off-axis guider. Uh, and so the idea was, if you want to come around here and look, was I basically wanted to have everything on, t on the scope with just one handle, Unplug a couple of cables and then carry it in, and I'm good to go. So that literally just goes and sits in the house. Upstairs. Yeah, it just goes sits in the house. Yeah, exactly. And then the mount. So two trips. Yeah, two trips. Yeah, or one if I keep it connected because it's light enough that I can, I can pick it up. You know, so I wouldn't carry it around all day, but it's it's luggable in and out of the house. So. So how do you polar align them? What makes this easier to set up and? Yeah, so it, I, I, it, the software for the mount has some polar alignment, and then of course there's Nina on the computer. Uh, I chose to just go with the uh, QHY uh, Pole Master, uh, and uh, that's served me, you know, the few times I've had it out, it's been good so far. So, so that's the one where you go left a bit, right a bit? Exactly. On the pole star? Yep, on the pole star, yeah. And it tells you what you need to do? It tells you where you need to go, yeah. Yep. 
yeah polar aligning moments yeah yeah exactly so 10 minutes maybe and, and, and I'm sure probably I could shave that off if I get better at it so and what have you got on the front cover then that's like something so different so this is a deep sky dad uh, it, it's a oh look at that yeah it, it covers it but the nice thing is is that I can do um, my flats with this and so it's it's lighted uh, in retrospect I should have spent the extra money and got one that was heated as well but I did not but anyway when I'm done with Nina I just have this in my process to where when it takes all the pictures uh, it's it's controlled with um, uh, Nina it closes it and then it does automates my flats for me so oh, fantastic and my and darks darks and flats because it completely covers it so that process is all automated through Nina workflows a guy I think he's in Poland uh, and it's basically all 3D printed, but he programs it, uh, and this is probably an ESP32 or some other type of device in here that he programs, but uh, he does a lot of these different things, but it's, you know, for the price of it, for what it does and everything, it's quite brilliant. Uh, and great, I guess anyone can do it, but he's put all the hard work and the effort into it, and it's all as comp compatible. Um, so it works with Nina and anything else. And you just else. press that button, is it? To... Uh, well, you can press the button or inside of Nina, and Nina will automate it for you. So Nina will open and close it as oh, you need it. Press the button. Come press oh, the let's button. press the button. Okay. But here's the manual way to do it. That's so cool. <laughs> like that. And then you press it again to close it. And you can also press it, stop it in the middle if you want. <gasps> And that's your desk cover, flats and darks. Yep. And yeah, darks. so I do all the, the other ones, and then what I do is I tell Nina to, to close the shutter and then do the darks. Yeah. Uh, and then it does the it does all the darks and then um, and then do the flats. And what have you got down at the camera end then? So down here is a QHY 268C, one-shot color camera. Uh, and it's cooled, yes. Uh, and it's um, And I'm also using a QHY. I just got this. Uh, I'll have to look at the name, the brand, uh, QHY, OHYS3200. And that's your guide camera. That's my guide camera, yeah. So, like I was saying before, I did have a separate guide scope with the camera, but it was just too much to carry out. So, I really only wanted one single handle without having stuff, but with the guide camera only having room over here or on top, it made it too bulky. And so, I decided to go back to an off-axis guider to reduce the bulk and the cool. weight of it. And what have you got on the top of it then? Let's have a look at... On the top uh, here? No, on the, on the top of the telescope. Oh, I know your right. images aren't used to it. No, no, the, that thing. Oh, this thing. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so <laughs> this is a Prima Lucha Lab Eagle 4. And this is an expensive bit of kit, but it comes... It's power. It is a uh, Nook uh, PC, Windows PC. Um, and power. And it's um, it's got your default uh, for... Um, uh, Defrosting, oh, what's it called? Dew heaters. Dew heaters. Dew heaters on it. It's got a, a sky quality camera meter. Uh, it's got GPS built in. Um, uh, pretty much and USB hub. Uh, so it's everything. So all your accessories. All your accessories into one single unit. Wow. So it, it, it's expensive, but it's well worth it. And the fact that it's a Windows PC means I can upgrade it to, you know, to another version of Windows. So um, it's not quite as limited as any of the Raspberry Pi computers. Can you point it out to us? We've got Wi Fi. What have we got on there then? Yeah, so this is the Wi Fi right here. Um, and then, of course, all the USB right here. And then this is a high speed USB. Uh, this is the power connector. And then in the back are the other power connectors. So this so is it's all proper connectors, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's got proper stuff. Yeah, seals or mil specs sort yeah. of style, isn't it? Right. This right here, this other antenna. This is the GPS receiver. Okay. Um, and then on the other side here, you've got since it's a since it's a Nook. We um, since it's a Nook, you got your HDMI, your Ethernet, and uh, yeah, HDMI port. And then this is another little um, attachment for some other type of things. But um, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's great. And there's a Windows PC, so you can upgrade yeah, it. Yeah, Windows PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what have you got on the top? It looks like it, oh, your, this your comb, isn't it? Is you yeah. So this something? right here is uh, I found this on uh, uh, on the internet on I think it was uh, printables.com or somewhere. But basically, this is um, a, a wiring loom, and so I scaled it up about 120 percent. To make it large enough for uh, the larger cables uh, and basically it just it keeps it from becoming a bird nest although I guess it probably looks fairly organized like a bird nest right now so 
and that keeps all the strain relief and... yeah exactly yeah and then I have another one here on my camera so this is another one I printed uh, this one will be specific to whatever camera you use and this allows you to basically take your cables and then put them through and then have it sit on top of your camera to keep this stuff to a bit more strain relief as oh, well. Oh, so it doesn't dangle on the ground? Yeah, and I just 3D printed that, yeah. Oh, so the cables go through a little slot? Yeah, the cables go through, they get a little, there's like a little another teeth up here. Uh, you just put them under it like that and then you just slide it back over your camera and it just gives another relief and keeps everything organized. So you've got powered USB hub, yep. all your operating system, yep. camera, yep. guider, yep. mount, yep. two heaters. Yep. All, in all one, on one, so one all device. All on one thing, yeah. So it's quite, it's, it's, it's brilliant. And it's got these nice external antennas for the Wi-Fi. So um, that kind of solves all any kind of range issues. Uh, it's still not that great, but it, it, it's, it works enough to get to the house. So so when you come outside, you set up, yeah. polar line on the camera. Yeah. Polar line, sorry, on the polar scope. Yep. And that's then you, it. And then, then just program up what you want to look yeah, at. Yeah, program up what I want. Yeah, exactly. That's it. So. Um, and the focuser? The focuser is another, it's a Primo Lucha Lab, uh, is, I think it's Asado? I forget the brand name, I'm rubbish on it. Sesto Senso 2. Oh, it's just, yep. Sesto Senso 2. And uh, this is really nice. I, I had the Pegasus Astro one before, uh, and it was okay on my Skywatcher um, OTA, but this one, uh, this is really, this is a really nice focuser. So it's, it might be a little bit louder, but it's really nice. So. so the bit I'm really looking forward to then is we're going to run up on the computer that's on the hot tub yes and uh so you, do you have your dew heaters on if we're running the hot tub as well uh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so you're gonna run and then just give us an idea of how the telescope moves on the new mouse yeah sure let's do it yeah so right now i am um you may bring this and it all talk yeah let's yeah so i come over to you then yeah so this all runs so on right the now wi-fi into your primary loop yep, you exactly yep so right now i'm connected with remote desktop into the uh, computer here uh, and I just run everything from there so and and I doing this on, I'm on a Mac so everything oh, just sorry to hear that yeah so um, uh, unfortunately I, I do have to use Windows <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and so this is uh, and there's KDoc and there's the uh, this is the software the uh, Pegasus Astro Unity platform um, of course you got you know you can use Nina or whatever else but just for the demo purposes I have it um, just using it here so you can see this has I don't know if you can see it or not but it does have star alignment in here I've not been very successful with it yet so it might it's one of those whenever we ever get a a rash of clear nights then maybe yeah. I'll get back out here but for for now I'm sticking with the uh, pole master so but um, shall we see it and hear it yeah, in action? Yeah, I'll yeah. swing around a little bit there you are all right away. so here through the magic of uh, robotics this is this is what we get I can't hear a thing. So, I think you hear the traffic. Traffic and the bird song, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, more so than anything else. But that's. And it does look weird. Yeah. Not having a counterweight. Now you were saying sometimes you people put the counterweight in the tripod just to stop the tripod toppling over. For, yeah, from toppling over. But right now I I haven't ha run into that problem. So, uh, I but I'm only at about nine point five kilo on there with everything, uh, maybe less than that. But anywhere I'm just probably just a smidge over nine kilo. Uh, with everything on top um, and so but yeah oh, that's, that's just seamless isn't it yeah so you set this up polar line get it focused yeah fire up your target list and you go back inside and have a cup of tea and yeah yeah so let's go back inside let um, Nina run everything and uh, just watch TV with the missus <laughs> and just listen for any kind of uh, bad noises so when uh, the rain starts you know you gotta run out yeah or when the rain yeah exactly <laughs> so but uh, yeah, it never rains in England, does it? No, never, never. So, uh, but nice thing about this mount also another feature is that the mount also has built-in uh, Wi-Fi. So if you are somewhere remote, it can serve as an ad hoc wireless network. Oh really? So you don't have to necessarily bring your own router along. You can just communicate with the mount uh, with its own ad hoc network with your laptop. So. And I've realized, we haven't talked, what telescope are you using? Oh, yes. So, I am using the ASCAR 500, oh, that's FRA 500. ASCAR FRA 500, quintuplet. It's all right? Yeah, it's been really good, yeah. 
yeah so uh, all the pictures I've had I, I probably am not the biggest pixel peeper but for you know my for you know the quality of what I've been looking for has been great so but brilliant scope so uh, nice thing is through first light optics um, this is the same maker of sharp star but on the ASCAR, I think it's sort of their higher end. Um, First Light Optics, they uh, measure these. And so they're similar to the Skywatcher telescopes to where they pre-measure before they send them out so that you know that you're getting... Oh, really? The optics are good quality. So, you are you know, there's a better chance of getting good quality on the optics. So, so where did you get it all from? Did you get it all from First Light? First Light, yes, yeah, a mix. First Light Optics on the, the, uh, the tube. Um, and then uh, 365 Astronomy for some other things. Uh, 365 Astronomy for the mount, but actually, uh, I ordered it early from 365 Astronomy because they were the first ones to say they had it in, uh, or carrying it, and then eventually First Light Optics yeah. uh, started carrying it, and I think all the big ones carry it now. So, um, but before Pegasus Astro was only known for small components, so I think this is probably their biggest thing outside mm -hmm. of their power yes. and other kind of small things they do. So, so th this is a sort of grab and go portable. It's portable as it can setup. be. Yeah. Yeah, you, you got it nailed, have you? Yeah, and everything set up, everything seamless. Everything seamless, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and I think it'll only get better the more I get, you, you know, used to it, and once we get some, you know, clear nights. So, so it's your fault the weather's rubbish, isn't it? It's pretty much, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say so, yeah. So it's a keeper then. It's a keeper, yeah, yeah.